and welcome to Grandad Reviews. In this video, I want to have a look at Fuji XS10. Just recently purchased this, actually just a couple of days ago. I thought I'd give my reasons for buying it. Uh, my first look, so not an actual in-depth review, but a quick look at what my first impressions are, just having got it out of the box and having a quick play with it. What I found not frustrating, but different to either my X-T30 and my X-T3 and just go over those little bits and just see what different there is what differences there are between the X-T30 and X-T3 and just see if you think it's uh, worth purchasing yourself now I purchased the camera basically because I've got a neurological problem and I'm finding it difficult to carry heavy weights so I know the X-T3 isn't that heavy I was looking for something a bit lighter uh, just for normal walk around photography not if I go somewhere if I go somewhere I will go in the car <laughs> when we're allowed to go in the car uh, and take stuff but if we're just going around the town or just going for a walk I wanted something light and uh, X-T30 I've got set up in the studio uh, it's all rigged out and they don't want to keep taking that to bits so I thought take this also, I'm starting to get a few trembles in the hands, which makes hand holding quite difficult. And the XS10 has got IBIS. Now, I know most of my Fuji lenses have got optical image stabilization, uh, but in some circumstances, it's not quite enough. So, that was an, another reason for, for purchasing the XS10. So, that was, that was my reasons. So once I've got it, what's my impression? Well, the build quality, yeah, I think it's excellent. It's just as good as the X-T30, just as good as X-T3. The grip is so much better than those both those cameras. And on the X-T3, what I use is this small rig grip, as you can see, which gives it that extra bit. And in fact, if we look at them side by side, it's still bigger. And the XT3. So that's an advantage. I've quickly tried my Canon lenses with the Fringer adapter on, and I don't know if the AF algorithms or firmware is different in some way, but they seem to work better than on the XT3. The autofocus does seem a little bit snappier, so I don't know if they've tweaked something on there. I got the kit with the 16 to 80. Now it is totally different on the top with the different dials. And I did see some reviews where people were finding it easy to hit the wrong button. So I've actually set these up differently. So what I've got, and I'll sh show in a deeper in the in the video, Q is still Q, it still goes the Q menu. Record button I've put as auto white balance lock because I use that quite often the ISO button I put it as a function button for the eye and face detect so I can just switch that straight on and off now this dial here by default does the film simulations now I must admit I don't use the film simulations very often I shoot 99% in RAW and if I want to add the film simulations, I add them later on in Capture One or Lightroom. So because I've changed the ISO button, I've changed this to do my ISO. And then I've obviously set up my quick menu uh, boxes and my My Menu on that as well. So I'll just have a I'll show you what I've how I've got the these set up, so you can see on the screen, and I'll also show you what I found. <clears throat> not frustrating but something that's 
yeah, it's different. I've got to get used to it. So we'll have a look at that next. I say this will be a quick overview of my first impressions on the XS10, and then I'll do a proper review uh, in another video. So let's uh, have a look at the menus. Right, so this is how I've set up my XS10. As I say, Q, still Q. I've done it with the 12 boxes. So as you can see, that's how everything is set on there. Now the ISO, if you look where it's, you've got the A for aperture priority down at the bottom, right down the bottom. Next to it, you've got the metering system. At the moment, it's on matrix meeting. I press the ISO, it then, as you see, you'll go to face and eye detect. Now, the what it picks when I press that is related to what I've got in there. So at the moment, it's on off. But if I just did face, when I press the button, as you can see, I just get face and not face and eye. So it's just face now or off. And a Q. And I just do it to right eye. And I press ISO. Right eye or off. So if I leave it on there, face and eye. So I can quickly change. Just by pressing that, I can quickly change that if I need to, without having to go into queue, without having to change it or anything like that. The record button, which is your fast record, so if you're in stills, any of the still settings, you press that, it'll start recording in full auto. I will never use that. So what I've done, if you look just above where it's got my film simulation, which is standard, if I press it, auto white balance lock will come up. So whatever the camera's determined is a white balance, I can quickly do it. And it's a quicker way of doing it than doing a custom white balance. If I've got a grey card in a situation, I can point the camera at the grey card. The camera auto white balance will pick the correct white balance for that grey card. The light on it, hit lock, I'm done. Don't need anything else. So that's what I've done with those there. Now I'm in aperture priority. The rear dial in aperture priority just does exposure compensation. Front dial does nothing. So what I've done with this dial is I've set it to ISO, which this button should do. So by turning this one, we bring the ISO up. We've got three auto ISOs. And then we've got uh, a high 51200, high 25600, and then we go down, all the way down to some low, low 80. And then in the auto ones, we can go across and change the default sensitivity and max sensitivity and the shutter speed as well leave it on all time so with that I can just change that now this is a little not annoyance I put it in manual so right now in manual still does the aperture with that so the aperture is changing and I've got it to preview the exposure so you can see the screen get darker and lighter back one's doing the shutter speed front one doing nothing Now I'll show you on the X-T3, when I change the ISO on this one, yes, the screen changes brightness because I'm previewing everything, but what I can't see is the scale. So this scale on the side here, which you can see, like if I change the shutter speed, so if I'm on 800 ISO, you can now see I'm slightly overexposed. So I can bring the shutter speed and you can see the exposure meter changing. 
and obviously the screen changing. Now if I've got that so that the screen doesn't change or I want to just fine tune it on it say I want to go down half a stop or something with the ISO that scale disappears. So yes I know I've gone up one but then I've got to look oh, I'll just go a bit more and that's just a little annoyance nothing nothing major but I'll show you on the X-T3 what I mean by that. So yeah let me just show you what I mean by a little quirk in the ISO setting. So we've got X-T3 I've got it set up so that the ISO in auto is controlled by the command wheel obviously aperture right there shutter speed at the back so as you can see I can change shutter speed with the back one and the ISO by the front dial so if you watch I can change the ISO and still see on there the gauge so as I go down the ISO I can see I'm two stops under I've also got the digital telling me I'm two stops under so what I'm seeing with the ISO changing at the bottom is the, the full screen all the still all the information I need it's just a, different to the XS10 but I thought I'd just highlight that on there now if I go into menu I go to my menu and these are the things I've just put in on this what's good about this the menus change depending on what you're on change from stills to video the menus change the dials don't do such I've still got my ISO there I'm going to set it to auto Put shutter speed on the back dial and obviously the aperture on on there if I go into the Q menu so it's a different set of options which I think is quite uh, quite clever and if I go into there into my menu then I've got different sets under the zebras and such like so we get a different set of menu options which I think does help to, to split it apart from that there's also your touch screen and I've set the touch screen up with uh, histogram coming from the bottom level coming from the top We've got ibis control and we've got zebras coming from the other side i've also got this control so you can control without using the dials so yeah i'm quite pleased with the camera so far got to get out and uh, take a few images with it the menu system is definitely different it's going to take a little bit of playing around with to get uh, muscle memory into different positions but uh, yeah I'm really pleased. I think it's an excellent camera. Um, so this is my first look, my first impressions after getting it out of the box. Um, and I'll do another video a bit more in depth. I'll do a few more videos coming up and just uh, see how we get on with it. And I'll try it with my Canon lenses and see what the results are. So if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Again, give it a thumbs down. If you need, hit the like button, that will help the channel and get it to pushed in front of more people to uh, see if they'll enjoy it. So until next time, see you later.